taking this shirt off. It is way too hot in here. Okay, everyone, we're back here in my living room because I need to film this while it's still relevant. I don't know why I'm trying to read, like, new books because, like, I'm always late and a million people have already reviewed them. But I figured, why the heck not? Let's try at least one more time to be on top of something. That something is The Ivies, the latest book by YouTuber Alexa Dunn. This time she has written a thriller and I am thrilled because you guys know that I actually quite enjoy thrillers, whereas Alexa's other books were romances and those are less my scene. This one, right up my street. I am a fan of Alexa's channel. I find her advice very helpful, especially as someone who hopes one day to be traditionally published. She's very aspirational, what can I say? If you are also a thriller fan, I do have reviews of other thrillers here on this channel. I especially love closed circle thrillers, which is ones where the characters are trapped somewhere and one of them is probably a murderer. In fact, I read two of them recently and did a review together, so check that one out when you're done watching this. Nigel is here. Meow? Hmm? Yeah? Let's read the blurb, why don't we? It's over here on my laptop on Goodreads. Let's check it out, see what it says. Everyone knows the Ivies, the most coveted universities in the United States. Far more important are the Ivies. The Ivies at Claflin Academy, that is. Five girls with the same mission, to get into the Ivy League by any means necessary. I would know, I'm one of them. We disrupt class ranks, club leaderships, and academic competitions, among other things. We improve our own odds by decreasing the fortunes of others, because hyper-elite competitive college admissions is serious business. And in some cases, it's deadly. There's a little blurb at the bottom that's just kind of one of those, you know, oh, the author delivers blah blah blah, but then the last line is, too bad no one told them murder isn't an extracurricular. Keep in mind that Alexa probably didn't write that. Most authors don't write their own blurbs. So how about that cover real quick? I like it okay. It's fine. It doesn't make me go, oh my gosh, I have to read that, but it also doesn't put me off. It's just one of those covers that's serviceable, it's doing its job, but I don't, like, love it. So let's talk about the book itself. If you, like me, are a thriller reader, this book is gonna hit all of those beats. Because I've also watched Alexa's videos about writing this book, I'm not surprised. Because this is her first thriller, she did want to stick fairly closely to the very standard beats of the type of book she was writing. And honestly, I'm here for it. I know everyone says you gotta disobey the rules, and that's fine, but also you should know the rules before you disobey them. The rules, and again, there's no such thing as like a hard 100% rule in the world of writing. The code is more what you'd call guidelines than actual rules. But disobedience to the rules should come with an understanding of what they are so that you can break them on purpose. That's my opinion anyway. So I'm fine that Alexa wanted to go pretty standard for her first thriller. I think that's a perfectly reasonable and safe thing to do. And it doesn't make the book bad just because it follows the thriller guidelines. Every scene beat is there. Every time you expect motion, there's motion. Every time you expect a twist, there's a twist. And to a teenager who's reading a thriller maybe for the first time, this could be a good gateway thriller in my opinion. This book was incredibly front-loaded with info dumps. Alexa has experience with college admissions and um, yeah, you can tell because she wants to tell you everything right at the beginning. I wish that she had found a way to spread it out. I was listening to the beginning and I was like, oof. This is going to be painful if much of this book is taken up with explaining college admissions. Fortunately, it petered off, and I understand you got to get this information to your reader. I just really wished that she had found a way to spread it out through the book more and make it less just so info dumpy at the beginning. The craft in this book, in my opinion, is better than in her previous two books, which we love to see. It We love to see authors improving. Maybe it's just because she wasn't bogging herself down with a pre-existing story because her other two books were retellings. But also, I think she's probably just improving as an artist. She's still leans more on telling than showing, but that can be chalked up a little bit to style and that's not going to bother some people. And honestly, in this book, it didn't bother me very much as much as it did in previous ones. 
characterization is fairly thin on the ground, but I can forgive it in this book because that's kind of how most thrillers are. Unfortunately, in thrillers, they tend to rely on archetypes a lot more than they do on fully fleshed out characters because the plot is the most important part in your average thriller. And this book is no exception. But I think, again, that leans into Alexa's strengths because characterization was never something I felt she was very good at. I will say that I guessed the killer immediately immediately. But I do read a lot of thrillers. Again, if you are a thriller reader, then nothing in this is going to surprise you. But I wasn't honestly disappointed because at least it was believable the whole way through why the other characters didn't guess the killer. And that I feel is the most important thing. Even if as a reader you have figured out the twist, the most important thing is that you're not annoyed with the characters for not having figured it out themselves. Again, coming back to characterization, the main character is fairly flat. They all are. She relies on that character is a journalist trope that many thrillers rely on to give the main character a reason to want to investigate things, although this character has the added thing of her friends are the ones that she's kind of investigating, because she has made friends with a group of mean girls, essentially, the Ivies, and now she's trying to figure out what's going on with them. Speaking of which, the main character begins the book and has been in this mean girl clique for some time. She considers them her friends, but conveniently she has done the least evil so that we as the readers don't hate her. And honestly, I kind of wish that Alexa had had the balls to just make her a total bitch. Because as it is, it's kind of like we're constantly making excuses for this character who still did bad things. But because she's our viewpoint character, she's like the least evil, and I'm just like, also, she is hashtag poor. She is a poor. So all of her friends are rich and she's a poor scholarship kid, which is again a huge cliche. I don't think I can think of a single like academic book where the main character isn't like the poor one, the scholarship kid. It would have been interesting to see her also be a spoiled rich girl, but like dealing with it in a different way that maybe the other spoiled rich girls dealt with it. Or possibly have some other girls in her group who were also poor. Because it did make it a little bit less believable that she ever wound up with the Ivies in the first place. There are reasons that they give that she wound up with them, but none of them are terribly strong. There was romance in this story, but it was very, very limited. The main character has a crush, and we get some interaction with the crush. We could have done without a romance at all, but there is always that pressure in publishing to have a romance in your book, even if it doesn't need to be there and it's kind of clunky. I spent all of the scenes involving the romance wondering why there was a romance. I will say that the romance did go in a direction I wasn't expecting, so hey, at least kudos to Alexa for taking it in a different direction. Speaking of Alexa, if you have watched her videos and you are familiar with her favorite thriller tropes, it will be even easier to guess what's going on in this book. One of the things that weirded me out the most in this book was actually the time period that it was set in. This story is actually set in the future, a few years from now, it being spring of 2021 as I'm filming this. I believe this is set in like 2025, or maybe it was 2023, I can't remember. There were cursory mentions of the pandemic, like it slowed college admissions down, stuff like that. But that was it, that was all the mention we ever got is like, oh, you know, remember that year when we all had to do school from home or whatever? As though it left no impact on the world whatsoever, and it made me really wonder why this was set in the future, and not doing either A, what most books set in 2020 and 2021 are doing, which is ignore the plague altogether, or B, set a little bit in the past, more in the time period where Alexa herself was working in college admissions. That would make sense. But because it's set in the future and because there is very, very limited mention made of the pandemic, it really hurts the world building because going forward, COVID is not gone. COVID is still here, even though some of us are vaccinated against it. Right now, we don't even know how long those vaccines are going to last. COVID is going to be a reality for the rest of our lives. And just going, oh, remember that weird year where college admissions were messed up? Is not, I don't think, how we're going to be in the future. Like, it was a traumatizing year for all of us. Really, every time it was brought up, I was like, mm -mm, this doesn't feel real. This doesn't feel like how we're going to be a few years from the infamous 2020. I don't know if she was pressured to do that by publishers to make it more accessible to Gen Z, but 
it was a miss for me. So overall, this was a fun read. It was very readable, or I guess listenable, because you guys know I do audiobooks. It was easy to pick up. I was never like, oh man, I gotta listen to that again. I was always interested to pick it up. The pacing was solid, and though it didn't do anything unexpected, I like thrillers and I don't mind if they do the things that most thrillers do. Even though I would like a little bit more variety, I kind of knew what I was getting into with this book. Oh, I did want to say I almost missed this point. The final confrontation, I wish it had been more intense. I mean, you know there's gonna be a final confrontation. Hello, this is a thriller. But it really it was kind of bland, and it was over, and I was like, that was it? That was the big final confrontation? Usually in thrillers, the main character is hanging on by the very skin of their teeth during the final confrontation. <laughs> Those are my final thoughts. I gave it three stars on Goodreads, and if you are a fan of thrillers and don't mind if they're a little bit cliched, or maybe you love the cliches, or if you're young and starting out with thrillers, this might be the book for you. Don't forget to check out the rest of my channel for lots more bookish content. And if you can't get enough of me, you can check me out on Patreon, where your support helps me publish my own books, as well as getting you neat rewards. If you want to follow me on social media, all of those links are in the doobly-doo, so you know what to doobly-doo. And I will see all of you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! Nigel has just, like, melted beside me. He's, he's just a puddle. It's very warm, and we don't have AC, so he's just a puddle of cat. Sorry, buddy. Stop. Patron time. Alright, I'll just read you the patrons. Rainfall, Kit, Hidden Glade, Persephone, Light Julie, OS, Anna C, Anna W, Belle, Patrick Murphy, Anne Sophie, Callison, Ray, Artemis, Shelby, Zaire, Jesper, Irene, Scribbling Cat, Savvy, Jenny, Amanda, Lisa, and Sarah. Those are sure some pretty awesome patrons. I bet you're jealous, but they're mine. You can't have them. They were popular, please. It's all about popular. It's not about aptitude. It's the way you're viewed, so it's very shrewd to be very, very popular like me.